it's the fourth run of Taskmaster New Zealand, and it's just, it's one of the best. There's there's no reason to get into a whole thing. I've I've talked about so many seasons and series of Taskmaster, the UK version, the New Zealand versions, and you know I'm always like ah, a whole thing about each each of them and how they stand out. This one, it's it's one of the best. Everything that I felt about the the second one from New Zealand, I was like, wow, blew my mind. They did it again two seasons later. I, I've liked all of them, but like, holy, I'm, how, how? It's so good. Go watch it. Stop watching this. Go watch that. Uh, and then come back and watch this. If you want to hear about how I think the contestants from Taskmaster New Zealand Series 4 would do on Survivor. Yeah, let's jump into that. First up is Bubba. I have Bubba as a sole survivor. I have her categorized as a, a brawn tribe member and as a villain. Uh, Bubba's just, I, I think, one of a kind. I can't think of a contestant that's super similar to Bubba. She has done things that other contestants have done. She got a tattoo. Uh, which happened in the very first ever series of Taskmaster in the UK version, but this was different. This was for a prize task. She didn't get a tiny little name. She got the faces of her fellow contestants, which was crazy. I feel like that's brawn energy. Uh, blew my mind. I didn't, I, I don't think I knew about that. Uh, or if I did, I might have forgot by the time I watched it. Absolutely wild. Uh, she married herself. She tackled Paul. Uh, she, the, the task where they had to impress a teenager or get the, not impress the teenager, but get the teenager to think that they're cool, she did not give a fuck and said that in front of the teenager, absolutely wild, uh, it's a little bit of villain energy, but it's fun villain energy, Bubba is a villain that you would root for on Survivor, she would run schemes, she would be in your face, she would be gathering numbers she'd be winning challenges bubba i think could do it all she's cool funny one of the funniest uh almost won this series of taskmaster which is nuts i absolutely adore bubba uh she's amazing she's very good at taskmaster very funny yeah came out of the gate so strong too i think it was like the second episode she got that tattoo maybe i'm misremembering but it didn't take long so that's Bubba. Easy winner in my mind. Easy broad and easy villain. Now next up, we have Die Henwood. Die, uh, I also have as a soul survivor, but I'm on the beauty trap and as a hero. Um, one thing with Die that never left my mind was I watched the series on a, a video that was just the entire season. Uh, I, you know. I, I couldn't wait for the official release of the YouTube channel, unfortunately. And one of the comments was, Die Henwood reminds me so much of Bob Mortimer. And Bob Mortimer is one of my favorite contestants of all Taskmaster. You know, uh, any version, any series, Bob's up there is one of my favorites. And Die quickly kind of fit that bill for me. He was fun and goofy and excited. He had so much, like, fun energy to to do the different tasks but <laughs> he was just strange he's a strange dude he's meditating he was having a, a bag of golf clubs as his wife uh, he just did all sorts of goofy stuff his dress-ups were great uh, he's just excited and happy to be there he's pretty good at the task he's very very strange I feel like uh, the difference with him and Bob, uh, in terms of how I think they would do on Survivor, Bob I had a hard time thinking about, but with Dai I was just like, everybody loves Dai, and Dai seems uh, a little bit younger and a little bit more, like, athletic, I guess. Uh, it's weird saying that, because it's like, the athletic tasks that I'm thinking of, it's like, they, they have to build a, a workout thing and beat Paul and Ping Pong, so there's stuff like that, but... Uh, well, they did cricket as well. Anyways, I feel good about Dai. I feel like Dai could win. He would be a lovable, rootable hero. Uh, beauty, I, I, he didn't quite fit fully into brown, didn't quite fit fully into brain. And if you do a lot of goofy, strange stuff, then I just kind of lock you into beauty. So that's 
Die Henwood, another winner. Next up is Karen. Karen was the contestant that, like, I, I had seen, I think, some clips, or at least heard some things about the series, but Karen was the one that I feel like I saw the least about, uh, and she absolutely won me over. She's so funny. Uh, I have her making the post bridge, I have her on the beauty tribe, and I have her as a hero. The hero and beauty thing come from, like, you know, she got engaged <laughs> to her partner on the show uh, for one of the tests, which is very wholesome and sweet. Uh, she was singing songs and playing music and stuff, doing uh, things that were heroic. Uh, kissing Paul, which is uh, kind of villainous, uh, but beautiful, I guess. Uh, the post-merge part with Karen for me comes from... I, she's not like... I don't think she'd be bad socially, strategically, or physically or anything. It's just that like when I think about her on Taskmaster, she, she whiffed so many tasks... <laughs> compared to her fellow contestants uh, that I was like, I can't put her in Soul Survivor. Uh, I feel like she could get far but I, I, she doesn't have like raw winner. Like Bubba I mean, it was like winner villain. Daya was like winner hero. Karen I was like I'm not sure. Beauty and hero. I was confident that she'd be a beauty tribe member. Confident that she'd be a hero was unsure about where I'd place her, so I landed on post merge, but I do love Karen. She's very funny. Very goofy. Yeah. Next up is Mel. Melanie Bracewell, Soul Survivor, Beauty and Hero. What a beauty and hero trap members on series four of Taskmaster New Zealand. Um I was between beauty and brain for Mel, but I felt like a lot of her tests that blew me away were more of the creative ones. She's uh, the type of contestant that I tend to gravitate towards with some of the way she handles tests where like she marries her hand but her hand was cheating on her and she kills her hand in a very dramatic and bloody fashion. Just those sorts of, you handle a test like that, I'm all about it. Uh, brain was considered because the, uh, there's that red herring test which I did not mention for our previous three who with that in a very funny way. Um, but Mel was smart. She could kind of fit into into brain or beauty. Um, and here I just felt like there wasn't anything overly villainous that I'm that at least stayed with me the way that it did with like Bubba. Uh, one thing I forgot to say with Bubba is that one of her prize tests was that she stole Ray's Nintendo Switch games, which is hilarious. Uh, which Mel did spy on Ray with the telescope, so there's that to consider too. Maybe she should be a villain, but I just felt like she crushed a lot of the tasks. Um, ones that she didn't get points on, I was like, that's strange, but Jeremy is, <laughs> is hard to read with certain things. Um, but a lot of fun, creative responses to tasks, uh, and pleasant overall, so I have her as a hero, but yeah, one of the, one of the stronger contestants, very well-deserved winner, which I would have said about anyone who won this series, they were all fun and entertaining in their own ways, but that's Mel. Uh, just an all-around strong Taskmaster contestant, um, and, um, yeah. Oh, one thing that would help her in Survivor, she's tall, uh, which, for whatever reason, I, that, I, that tends to translate to, like, oh, she's strong. <laughs> I don't know if she's strong, but she's tall, uh, yeah. <laughs> tall and smiley, which I think would help you on Survivor, so yeah. Uh, on to Ray, Ray O'Leary. Uh, who appeared on the previous season as uh, Josh's lookalike, which was cool. Ray, I have as a first boot, as a brain, and as a hero. Ray uh, reminds me a little bit of Jacob Derwin, which is a survivor season 38 Ghost Island. No, season 36 Ghost Island reference. Uh, it's the hair mostly. <laughs> Ray, he seems like a smart guy. I loved all, I loved how he handled the test. He was either like clever or he failed in dramatic fashion uh he was lazy with some of them but it was just so like goofy the the way he got married and divorced was bizarre and i loved it uh ray one of my favorite all-time taskmaster contestants but i could say that about this whole crew uh the same way i would have said it about the second new zealand season but uh, he's just a goofy dude he seems afraid of most things he would definitely be a first boot uh, but he'd be one of the most iconic first boots that would go on many podcasts and would be amazing. Uh, 
brain. He's just he's a brainy dude. Like a you know you look at Ray, you're like brain tribe. <laughs> and then here we're a villain. It's like. I don't know. I didn't feel strong one way or the other about that. Uh, I just kind of leaned here. I don't think he would go out in a villainous fashion. I think he would go out and people would be like, oh, poor Ray. And I feel like that happens to more heroic players than villainous players. But, um, yeah. Iconic green. Not green. Iconic gray suit. And then for his, like, Performing Tess outfit to be the same thing, but short sleeved and shorts uh, really got me. I loved that. This whole cast, man, they dressed up as each other for the finale. I thought it was part of a task, and it wasn't. They just chose to do it. Uh, all the, all the, just different responses to Tess were great. Just the energy was on another level. Uh, this is one of the best series of Taskmaster. Anyone should go watch it if you haven't. I think I said it at the start and just blacked out. Uh, until this point. Go watch this season. It's amazing. I love it. That's all I've got to say. Uh, I think next up is Taskmaster Australia. Maybe I'll put that up first. I don't know. Alright, goodbye. <laughs>